Hello and welcome to the grammar skills module for commas. I titled commas for clarity. One of the things we have to remember about commas is that there are really a wide range of rules that sometimes conflict with one another. Um, it, the comma is really the most difficult punctuation mark to establish rules for. Um, if you look at different style guides, um, they actually give you different kinds of rules on where and when to put a comma. So what I'm hoping to do in this module is sort of look at the most common situations when it would be helpful to have a comma or when we might think there should be one but there shouldn't, um, so that we get a basic understanding on how to use this still kind of important type of punctuation. So on the following exercise slides, you will um, encounter sentences, sometimes pairs of sentences that sort of look at comma issues. You will then pause the video, if you're watching it as a video, obviously, um, revise the sentence, and then go on to the answer slide to ensure that you've given the correct answer. So let's start with exercise one. So one of the sentences here is punctuated correctly. The other one is not. So which is correct? The first one, the children needed clothes that were washable. Or the boys needed hiking boots, which were expensive. Let's look at answer one. So. The children needed clothes that were washable. So clauses that start with that, and I've marked this clause here in red, is what we call a restrictive clause. So a restrictive clause provides critical information that is necessary to communicate essential information. So we can't just say the children needed clothes. We need to make it clear that these clothes have to be washable so they don't have to be dry cleaned. Okay? So the important thing here is the word that is never ever preceded by a comma. So please don't ever put a comma in front of a restrictive clause, starting with the word that. Now, the second sentence, the boys needed hiking boots, which were expensive. Now, this clause, which I've highlighted in yellow here, begins with the word which. Clauses that start with the word which are called non-restrictive clauses. So it's clear that the boys need hiking boots. The fact that they were expensive is additional information that may be of interest to the, to the reader, but is not absolutely critical to conveying the information that we need to convey. Okay. So the other thing is that the word which always has to be preceded by a comma. So again, there should never be a comma in front of that. There should always be a comma in front of which. So the correct sentence is, the boys needed hiking boots, comma, which were expensive. Exercise two. Although the air is still warm in October, the water is too cold to swim. Is this sentence correctly punctuated or not? So again, the sentence is, although, comma, the air is still warm in October, the water is too cold to swim. So in this sentence, we are com communicating as well as combining two ideas. The first one is the air is still warm in October. The second one is the water is too cold to swim. Both of these are independent clauses. Now we are combining these two ideas into one sentence and the other thing we have to remember is the fact that although um, the air is still pretty warm the water is just too cold to swim, and that is ultimately the more important idea. So therefore, that's the independent clause at the end of the sentence. 
The less important idea, the fact that the air temperatures are still warm, becomes a dependent clause when we put the, co the subordinating conjunction although in front of it. So although is sort of the perfect example of a subordinating conjunction because we are subordinating, making less important the fact about the air being warm than the more important fact that the water is too cold to swim. The important thing to remember here also is that, that a subordinating conjunction should never ever be separated from the, the, the phrase that it's modifying with a comma. So there should not ever be a comma after a subordinating conjunction. I see commas after the word although all the time in my students' writing. Um, so please make sure that when you use it, so that, coordinating, that subordinating conjunction, you don't place a comma there. Okay. Now, there has to be a comma between the dependent clause, and the dependent clause again is, although the air is still warm in October, so we have to place a comma there before we get to the independent clause at the end the water is too cold to swim. So that is the final sentence here at the bottom. Although the air is still warm in October, comma, the water is too cold to swim. Exercise three. Bob is a sweet, innocent, affectionate kid. Is this sentence properly punctuated? Let's look at the answer. So here we have a list of adjectives. Sweet, innocent, and affectionate. And each of these adjectives individually modify the word kid. So if we could insert the coordinating conjunction and in between each of these adjectives, Bob is a sweet and innocent and affectionate kid, then those coordinating conjunctions should be commas. So the correct, the punctuated sentence would be, Bob is a sweet, comma, innocent, comma, affectionate kid. Exercise four. While we were eating, the cat jumped on the dining room table. Is it correctly punctuated? So here, the thing to consider is when we have an introductory clause or an introductory phrase, it's a, it's a relative sh relatively short sentence. It's not unclear what's going on. A comma may not absolutely be necessary. However, in this situation, on a first reading, the reader may get as far as while we were eating the cat and be confused, potentially disturbed. So here, a comma can clarify what's going on and at the same time eliminate the potential confusing by separating the main clause or the main idea, the cat jumped on the dining room table from the introductory clause while we were eating. So again, for the, the sake of clarity, the most successful solution here would be to write while we were eating, comma, the cat jumped on the dining room table. Exercise five. Karen Brown, PhD, teaches my chemistry 304 course. Is the sentence correctly punctuated? So here is what we need to keep in mind. When we have people's titles following their names, those titles should always be offset with commas. So the correct answer here would be Karen Brown, comma, PhD, comma, teaches my chemistry 304 course. An acceptable alternative to that would also be Dr. Karen Brown or just Dr. Brown teaches my chemistry 304 course. 
what you do not want to do is say Dr. Karen Brown, PhD. That's unnecessarily repetitive because we've already said she's a doctor, so we don't need to add PhD to follow her name. Exercise six. Drivers who are texting are not paying attention to traffic. Is the sentence correctly punctuated? So we talked earlier about restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. So the restrict non-restrictive clauses began with which and had a comma in front of them. So here, who are texting as part of the sentence is surrounded by commas, which means the main clause or the main idea in the sentence is drivers are not paying attention to traffic. What that suggests is that based on the punctuation we have right now, the, dr the drivers are not paying attention to traffic and that it is all drivers. So it falsely suggests that the information inside the comma is non-restrictive, non-essential, and therefore not critical to our understanding of the message. The problem is we are not suggesting that all drivers are not paying attention to traffic. It is only those drivers who are texting. So the correct sentence cannot have any commas in it. The correct sentence is drivers who are texting are not paying attention to traffic.